all right so what we can see here is that i made basically two kind of designs of a car and just dismiss these two things right here for a qu uh, for a quick second so here we can basically see what uh like a mid-engine sport car would look like so basically lamborghini huracan type shape of a car basically a very generic uh remodeling of that so i'm not trying to do anything crazy but basically this is the shape that those cars probably have and this is basically like a suv hatchback type of vehicle so the thing that I wanted to show and display with this is what uh, basically just an airflow or an air current would look like over a surface like this. So, um, so now that we are in the CFD simulation, you can see that there are a couple of multiple colors going on with, and these colors all highlight pressure zones. So everything that is green, that is just regular air pressure. Everything that is red will resemble a higher air pressure and everything that is blue is creating a lower air pressure. So in this case it will create some sort of suction on top of the car but the first thing that you need to realize is that uh, even though this is a simulation the air is actually not moving in real life in real life the air is just standing stationary and sometimes you have a little bit of a headwind or a tailwind or wind from the side or whatever but in a regular situation the car is moving through the air so every single time that uh, the car is moving towards like an air zone or whatever the bit that is there will be kind of a flow separation created on the car so there will be some of this air will go on top of a car and some of it will go below the car and the current that is traveling over the car basically will take the exact same time that it will take the current that is moving underneath the car but you can also see that the, the air current has to travel a longer distance over the car than it has to do underneath the car so because it has to travel a large, larger distance, but we're still doing it at the same time, this air current will speed up. It will move quicker than um, the regular air, the air, the, than the regular airflow, basically. And a quicker moving air zone, as I explained um, a couple of seconds ago, will create a suction. So that is basically what you can see here. On top of the car, the air has to move quicker, so it will create a low air pressure zone, resulting in this car basically doing the same thing um a aircraft wing does and it's creating lift it's trying to drag the car upward so in a race car sim situation this is not really what you want to have on a car you want it to produce downforce so um that is basically the thing that you can see right here so just a quick summary a shape like this one so if the car is to travel over if the air current has to travel over the car and it needs to travel longer way than it needs to do on the other on the bottom side it will um produce lift instead of downforce so basically the only car that i could think of right now on the streets and it's not even on the streets yet but the only car that is uh, being built that will create natural downforce without adding spoilers or splitters or whatever is that aston martin valkyrie because as you can see that the, uh, the air current that is traveling underneath the car but probably take the exact same amount of time that um, the air curtain is doing at the top of the car. Next thing that is uh, pretty important to remember when designing a car is that this shape, so a shape that is creating a low air pressure zone on top of it, so um, basically when it's traveling in a bow or whatever, or whatever you want to call it, this is not the only thing on a car that will be producing lift, so not only on the roof of the car. You can probably also imagine that a lot of fender flares on cars and particularly cars that have um, some motorsport intentions or performance intentions will probably have some type of fenders that are traveling over the wheels. This can also provide a lot of lift so that is also something that you want to minimize. So um, in the design process I will just dive into this uh, way deeper and um, yeah I will just show you a lot more on how to kind of prevent creating lift in these cars and everything so so the next thing that I wanted to show you is uh, that is pretty important when dealing with aerodynamics is flow separation and basically the, the most important thing about flow separation is that on the back of the car you kind of want to create um, just as least of a surface area as possible because as you can see there is this whole pocket of air sitting right here that is just attached toward to this back uh, toward the back of the car because there is a, a pretty big surface to attach these flows towards. So basically, you can imagine that every single Range Rover or SUV or whatever you kind of think about 
has this same problem so that is also basically why most of those cars can't really travel over uh, certain speeds and whatever this this whole packet of air will kind of be dragged on to uh, toward the car and will try to travel at the same speed that the car is traveling at and you can also see that there are, there are very slow um, lines coming off the back of that and that basically means that all of this energy all of this high intensity of the air is very much slowed down and a lot of that energy is being taken out of that air current so um, that is basically what you can see that's going on right there the next thing that i wanted to show you is basically how uh, spoilers work and for that i'm going to use this one right here and i can kind of create some float that is going over it so uh, in this situation you can see that on top of the spoiler there are uh, yellow zones that are high pressure zones and on the other side of it underneath it there are blue zones so that will kind of create a suction and it will drag it down and this will create pressure and it will pressure it onto into the tarmac again so so why does this happen as i said earlier in the video the air moving over it is being slowed down because it's met by resistance from the spoiler surface and everything so it's being slowed down and slower air uh, air currents create higher air pressure zones and underneath it the current needs to speed up because it wants to stay attached to the surface right here and uh, and it also needs to travel a longer distance than the air moving over it and that is why it starts to create a suction effect going on with the car and the combined suction and um, the combined pressure with the combined suction will create downforce so that will basically the the wing will be uh, underneath the wing it will, be, it will be pulled down and on top of the wing it will be pushed down so basically win-win situation and the the basically why this also creates a lot of air resistance is because of this you can kind of see that from the sides there will be vortexes created on the wing tips and i can probably even highlight that a little bit more if i just select uh, this face right here so you can basically see that there is there is um a vortex slash tornado however you want to call it is being created at the tip of that wing because that high air pressure zone on the top is trying to combine again become a neutral air pressure zone again with the low pressure zone that is on the bottom and a way to prevent that is with uh, end plates like in this solution and if I show you a little bit more surface plot again if you look at just this top surface you can see that in the middle section so from basically in this section there will be a high pressure zone on top of the wing but then on the sides it will kind of bleed off again because that um, that air is trying to move towards the underside of the wing because there is a, a low pressure zone there so the high pressure zone is being sucked in towards the low pressure zone and that is creating this uh, vortex so you can basically stop that vortex being created or you can limit it, it will still happen by adding these uh, wing end plates so that will kind of shut off the, the air trying to move from this section right here towards underneath the car it will still happen for somewhat uh, but it will be uh, less so with that you will create a larger zone on the rear wing there um, there will be some pressure on and you also create less of a vortex behind it so you'll increase downforce and minimize drag so that is basically a win-win situation for that car so if you again take out uh, this flow tra trajectory and also take out this one for the last car you can basically see a one big difference off top and let me just hide this one and also take these out of the model so now that we have these two combined with each other the main thing you can see basically if you take a side to side view is that from the first iteration of the car the air is basically moving downwards so this uh the, en the energy of the air is being directed towards the ground and with this version you can see that all of that air is basically being directed upward and you can basically see already that this car will produce downforce and this one won't 
because like Newton law says is that uh, every action creates an opposite and equal reaction so if air is moving upwards it means that the car is being moved downwards and if the air is being moved downwards it means the car is being dragged upwards basically so but why is that so of course we attached a huge rear wing to it and we also managed, managed to get a pretty big diffuser I also added this splitter so you can see that this high air pressure zone is being enlarged in front of the car and also in particular on top of the car this car will produce way more downforce than this one and you can even see how much that is so basically you set up a bunch of parameters but the only thing you need to focus on is that um this car is being dragged up by some somewhat of like 120 kilograms of force and this car is being pushed down by 75 uh, kilograms of downforce so this car is trying to be lift up and this car is trying to be pushed into the tarmac so that is basically the difference between the two so that is basically everything that will uh, be taken into consideration when I start the design process of the car and um, I will just dive into it a, a little bit deeper when I'm actually also having I have the car to use as an example so that I can show you what I did to prevent certain stuff or to yeah to create certain stuff at different points of uh, in the car so that is basically um yeah just the process that i'm going to um next video i will basically have a tutorial on how to do surface modeling in in, in solidworks and um then from that point out i will probably maybe do a lot of it um mo probably will do most of it in speed art videos because um yeah i probably don't really feel like uh, talking over it all the time so um that is basically what I feel like I'm going to do for the next couple of, probably two weeks, I think. I think uh, two weeks will be done with the body. So maybe even shorter because I really love car designing, really the, car, the body panel modeling. So I think I will be probably spending a lot of time doing that. So uh, just, just keep posting on uh, just everything that's coming. So uh, thanks for watching. Please also leave a like and also subscribe to this YouTube channel. And um, yeah, I want to just thank you for subscribing and watching and all of that. I'm Shikifel, don't ask me to sign. I'm out.